Hi guys, this is Faye from Faze World Media and in this video I want to talk to you guys about the Zoom whiteboard versus Miro. So both are very popular solutions. Look, Zoom recently actually upgraded their whiteboard functionality. So instead of just being able to draw, you know, features and very basic shapes, that sort of thing, Zoom is trying to be more like its competitors, such as Miro or Google Jamboard. At the same time, Miro has been one of the industry's most popular collaboration tools out there and especially medium to big to enterprise teams. Previously, I recorded a video about Zoom Whiteboard, and today I want to actually compare Zoom Whiteboard with Miro. For today's purpose, I'm actually comparing the free version, as you can see, from Miro with Zoom. The reason for that is that Zoom Whiteboard does come for free for existing subscribers of Zoom meetings as well as Zoom webinar. With that said, let's dive right in. Please watch all the way through the video and you will know exactly which one to choose from. And also, there are tips and tricks beyond the choosing either Miro or Zoom to make your meeting successful. On the Zoom side, you do have a variety of templates to choose from. By the way, this is also relatively new for Zoom. Agile Scrum, brainstorming ideas, designs and research, even icebreakers. So there you go. You can also choose to skip creating new board and just create one from scratch. And here on the right hand side, we have the Miro template. These are the ones for you versus shared and you have different use cases. From the get-go, I would say that Miro definitely has more variety when it comes to templates, but if you're just getting started with whiteboards and virtual collaborations in general, I would say that Zoom will have sufficient boards for you to choose from. Let's go ahead and choose one. So I'm going to start with a basic flowchart. Let's go ahead and choose to use a template. And here you can actually zoom in and out. And also there are a lot of shortcuts from within Miro right here that, for example, you can right click and be able to move the board around. So let's take a look. Similar functionalities is also available as part of Zoom Whiteboard. Now, from a visual perspective, I've always been a pretty big fan of uh, Miro. It's just more subtle changes, and I find the design in general to be more pleasant. In terms of these tools on the left-hand side, they're fairly similar. However, when it comes to the pen tools, Miro does have more variety, as you can see here. It also has more coloring options. One thing I will have to mention uh, that Miro definitely takes the lead on is not only the ability to draw on the board while you're on a desktop, for example, uh, the version I'm using right now, but you can also use your mobile phone as well as tablets. Based on some of the user research and feedback, I would say that Miro is definitely more user friendly when it comes to mobile devices. Now, in terms of shape options, uh, I would say that Zoom Whiteboard definitely has made a lot of improvements and you can also make copies. You know, you can group these shapes. Take a look at the sticky notes. So you can write something and I'll resize it. And here on the mural side, you can choose different colors. These are the color choices from within Zoom Whiteboard. And over here, you have different options for um, the sticky notes as well. Similar functionality. It will resize it. You can move it around and you can also resize these sticky notes as needed. You also notice that it actually shows who has provided a sticky note by default here in Zoom. It says Fei Wu. And here in Miro, you can have the option to show or to hide who is actually writing. So you can do show author or hide author. These subtle changes are also quite important. So let's take a look at the built-in functionality as part of Miro. So there are some additional advanced features as part of Miro that's not available uh, as part of the free account, which is upgrade to also have access to voting, video chat, and timers. And over here, uh, we have upgrade features. Then there's a present feature where all the tools are now hidden, as you can see. And to bring them back, you just close the presentation altogether. You can create a to-do list as part of meeting agenda and hide collaborator cursor reaction here. And one of the features that really makes Miro stand out is the idea of framing. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. In order to create a frame, this is the button here and you can actually create a frame. As you can see, it just randomly chose a portion uh, and I can resize the frame, let's say, to only include this section. So this is going to be a frame and you can play it. As you can see, this is 
you know, you can zoom in and out. And when you play the frame and this is all you can see. So as a result, a lot of people actually choose to use Miro to present and you're able to basically grab any section of your presentation and be able to speak to that directly. You know, adding another frame, let's say, as I'm moving the board around, and I'll just create a frame to highlight a tiny section uh, of these elements. You zoom in and see what it looks like. You can also hide it if you want. Now let's talk about export. When it comes to share and export, Zoom Whiteboard has the functionality for you to export either as PDF or PNG. It's a little limiting there. Whereas as you can see in Miro, you can save it as image and export a CSV even embedded somewhere as well. The biggest distinction perhaps is with Zoom Whiteboard, obviously it's already built into Zoom Meeting, Zoom Webinar, and you can prepare the Zoom board, you know, even before you start a meeting and collaborate very easily. Now with Miro, it is a third party app. However, with that said, Miro is part of Zoom's marketplace, so you can integrate Miro seamlessly with your Zoom meeting. So the question comes down to which one is right for you? Is it Zoom Whiteboard or is it Miro? So if you're a host or a collaborator, I do recommend that you try both and see which one works better. I really wouldn't be surprised if you want to start with Zoom Whiteboard because it's right there, especially if you conduct all your meetings on Zoom. I get it. You know, you want to see what it can do and what the limitations are. Now, when you hit the wall, when you hit the limitations and realize you need something that is more robust, even more modern, then Mirror is an obvious choice. If you're a freelancer or a consultant like myself, you know, I run meetings on multiple meeting platforms, including Zoom, Google Meet, Cisco, Microsoft Teams, even GoToMeetings a bit in the past. So I definitely want a platform independent virtual collaboration tool such as Miro. As promised, no matter the tool, it could be perfect and magical. It will not remove you as a host or a moderator to run a smooth meeting. So here are the final tips of not only choosing the right tools, but how to create an engaging and an effective meeting. Number one, always prepare an agenda ahead of time and communicate that agenda and to do's to your team. Two, structure your whiteboard effectively. This takes practice, so don't give up so easily. Three, collaborate visually and in real time. Remember to share your screen, integrate with the app so that the board is immediately visible to everyone. Four, Centralize your content in one place so it's easily accessible. I will also add to that that the naming convention, how you organize these whiteboards, as well as other files is really essential. Five, consolidate feedback and move away from emails. If you're doing so much of your work via these virtual collaboration tools, it's a good idea to you know save notes and next steps via these platforms as well. Six, break the ice and make visual collaboration part of your regular communication, whether it's a stand-up, product design meetings or brainstorm sessions. Don't make it a one-off thing. Train your team to enjoy virtual collaboration. Seven, be open to feedback from the team. Do not dismiss them. Eight, be mindful about newcomers and prepare to train them about how virtual collaboration works at your organization. So don't assume that everybody will come in and already know what is expected, how they would use the platform. Don't assume that people have used Zoom Whiteboard or have used Miro in the past. Provide a friendly and non-intimidating training session is gonna go a long way. Nine, break down silos and invite everyone to contribute. Do not favor one's opinion over another. 10. Keep track of time and be clear on activities, expectations, and outcomes. I know time sometimes is the element that completely goes out of the window. For that reason, we have developed the Zoom timers, whether it's you know, breakouts or a main session, it's really important to keep track of the agenda and finish each item and the entire meeting on time. Number 11. Live cursor matters. The ability to see activities in real time by person can be very helpful for attendees and hosts. Last but not least, let me know which tip you enjoyed the most when it comes to running better meetings as a host or as a moderator. Again, this is Faye from Faze World Media. I've also included a very special gift for you, uh, the free guide to run better Zoom meetings. You can get free access today. And if you like it, please share this video and share our tools and resources with someone you care about, maybe one of your colleagues. Much love to the community and I'll see you next time. Bye.